Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam and greetings to all the audiences and participant of this webinar. Uh, our moderator today, uh, Mr. Lawrence Kong, uh, might be joining a bit later. Uh, it could be due to some other emergency uh, or stuff like that. Uh, so he might be joining us later. Uh, however, uh, not to make you all wait, uh, I will uh, proceed uh, with the uh, uh, agreement from MPC uh, uh, Secretariat. So uh, I'll begin this webinar. Uh, so when uh, Mr. Lawrence Kong uh, joined in later on, uh, he might uh, 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 mention his name or towards the end. If, if he, he, he joins us, I, I'm not sure what happened. I tried to contact him. I uh, couldn't get him. I, I text him and also WhatsApp him. Uh, I couldn't get him. So we will go ahead uh, with this webinar anyhow. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to uh, uh, MPC um, for uh, inviting me to this webinar as speaker um, to share another important to topic uh, uh, to our nation. Uh, the title of this webinar is Labor Productivity. Two days ago, uh, I also uh, spoke about uh, the productivity, but that was on overall productivity. However, today um, we are talking about labor productivity, yeah? and um, the uh, this topic, uh, like I mentioned two days ago, is is a dry topic. Uh, productivity is a dry topic. Uh, there are a lot of calculations, a lot of formula, a lot of uh, numbers, a lot of graphs, a lot of tables. Uh, I hope uh, uh, all of you will bear with me. Um, I, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. However, I cannot run away from uh, going through numbers and graphs, <coughs> tables, some analysis, uh, and uh, some studies that I've uh, extracted and also summarize. So uh, just bear with me. Uh, we'll, we'll go through this together. Yeah? Um, this webinar actually is uh, a follow on uh, to uh, the recent study that was conducted yeah? um, on Malaysia comparativeness, uh, the world ranking. Yeah? The world ranking. Um, I was actually entrusted uh, to study on two uh, indicators. One is overall productivity, and the other one is labor productivity. They are very similar. They, they, they are very close uh, uh, and similar. Uh, however, there are minor differences that uh, I will go through afterward uh, during the uh, the sharing the presentation. Uh, but by and large, they 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 are closely linked. Huh? The labor productivity and also the overall productivity uh, closely linked. Uh, they use GDP uh, PPP, which is uh, GDP uh, um, that is uh, normalized uh, to make sure that uh, everybody every countries will be uh, compared uh, fairly, uh, not. Uh, getting the exchange rate to come into picture and distort uh, the, the comparison. Uh, it also involves uh, the number of people employed uh, and the hours work. So they, they're very similar. Uh, the major differences uh, between overall productivity and also labor productivity is basically for overall productivity is GDP per person employed. Uh, and for labor productivity is GDP per person employed per hour in US dollars. Both are measured in US dollars. Uh, we'll go through uh, afterwards. Yeah, um, I will explain briefly uh, on this ranking, um, the annual world comparativeness yearbook that was published by IMD, um, the renowned uh, uh, IMD, uh, International uh, Institute of Management Development. Uh, there are 254 elements, and uh, this labor productivity is one of them. Yeah, on the on the management. So the I, I mentioned earlier, this is a follow-on to the study, and the purpose 
of the study uh, was to highlight Malaysia's current ranking on labor productivity. Uh, this is for year 2020, but we look at the history as well. Uh, we analyze uh, the reason or the drivers that have arrived uh, or determine the current position uh, of Malaysia. Uh, and towards the end, I'll, I'll uh, share with you on the recommendation, the initiatives uh, that we uh, believe that could help uh, Malaysia to improve on uh, its current ranking uh, for this particular indicator. Yeah, uh, When we improve this, hopefully everything else uh, that has been uh, worked on as well will increase, uh, will become better, and the overall competitive ranking will, will be uh, better. So uh, a, a brief information on uh, WCY uh, annual report. This report was actually uh, published uh, since 1989 um, by IMD. And uh, the assessment uh, uh, of 63 nations uh, 63 economies were made uh, on four main factors the four main factors are economic performance government efficiency business efficiency and also infrastructure uh, economic performance has 46 elements uh, there are about five uh, sub sector uh, per sector and uh, beyond that uh, like uh, the economic performance the number of indicators or elements are 46, government efficiency 60, business efficiency 64, infrastructure uh, 84, total of 254 um, indicators that are being accessed or rather being assessed by uh, IMD. Yeah? And uh, subsequently, uh, they are reported uh, in the WCY yeah? mm -hmm. and the comparativeness. So um, from four main factors here, uh, labor productivity is in business efficiency main factor. Uh, business efficiency, you can see uh, our standing or our ranking has been dropping. Yeah, uh, Dropping in the sense that the ranking increased, so our performance dropped. Uh, you can see from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, uh, started 19 uh, in 2017, uh, and then 17, 18, and uh, dropped further to 29. Eh? Uh, the higher the number, the, the lower the performance. Uh, and um, the uh, in this business efficiency, uh, one of the sub factor is productivity and efficiency. Uh, productivity and efficiency, the numbers or the ranking from 2017 to 2020 uh, has been increasing yeah? from number 22 uh, be becomes uh, worse to number 24, number 25 and for the year 2020 uh, we were at number 32. That was when productivity and efficiency combined uh, uh, all, the, all the elements inside the productivity and efficiency combined together. And this is uh, what uh, being measured, what are the indicators being measured in uh, productivity and efficiency. Uh, you could see uh, from 3.01 until 3.1.10. Uh, I have shared uh, two days ago on the overall productivity, uh, which is the estimate of GDP, uh, PPP, uh, per person employed yeah, in US dollars. I, I went through, I, I, I uh, also uh, defined further on GDP and PPP. So I, I guess I need not do it uh, this time. Um, today, uh, after the overall productivity we, we, we shared two days ago, uh, today we'll be talking about uh, item or indicated 3.1.03, which is labor productivity, which is the estimates of GDP PPP uh, per person employed per hour. You, you, you can see the difference there, per person employed per hour. So previously, overall productivity was everything, just per person employed yeah, for the overall productivity. But for the labor productivity, the element of hour is inside there. So GDP per hour. yeah, and uh, the 
you could see in this slide uh, business efficiency <coughs> ranking uh, has been consistently below 30. Below 30 means worse than 30. Yeah? Uh, you can see the, uh, the, the numbers has been uh, 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 so above 30 is bad. And if you look at the labor productivity, uh, which we are talking about more today, uh, labor productivity, uh, the best ranking for the past 10 years, we were at number 43. Remember, this is based on uh, compared against 63 other countries, yeah? 63 countries, including Malaysia. So 62 other countries. So we were at number 43. The best was at number 43. And the worst uh, was at uh, number 47. And uh, for the year of 2020, we were ranked 44. Looking at this, you can see that we are very consistent. Um, well, you are right. Uh, we are consistently bad uh, in this case, yeah? which uh, we are trying to get uh, out of this situation. OK, so let, let's understand about uh, labor productivity uh, a bit more. Yeah. Uh, we need to understand this in order to appreciate uh, the indicator better and uh, appreciate the uh, uh, analysis and also recommendation uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, labor productivity uh, is actually uh, a measure of GDP uh, per hour's work. So basically, it is the hourly output of a country's economy. And uh, it measures the uh, efficiency, uh, labor input, uh, uh, how, how, or rather, the, it measures the how, how the efficiency, uh, labor input is combined with other factors uh, of production uh, and uh, use in the production process. Yeah, specifically, uh, we are talking about. Uh, 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 is charting other factors, uh, is charting uh, the amount of the, the real gross domestic product produced by an hour of labor. So how much uh, is the output for an hour of labor? Yeah? Growth uh, in labor productivity depends on three main factors, saving and investment in physical capital, the new technology, and also human capital. Okay. Uh, labor input, so, so how do you define labor input? Labor input is defined uh, as a total hours work uh, of all person engaged in production, so everyone that's engaged in production, the number of, of the number of hours that has been worked by them, and labor productivity um, basically only reflects partial uh, productivity uh, of labor uh, in terms of personal capacities. Yeah, um, so the ratio between output measure and the labor input uh, depends. Uh, to a large degree uh, on the presence of uh, other inputs as well, like capital, uh, other intermediate inputs, uh, technical, organization, uh, efficiency. Uh, we, we covered this uh, uh, day before yesterday as well, um, briefly. And I, I'm just uh, giving uh, more information uh, today. So uh, this uh, indicator is uh, measured in US dollar. Eh? Uh, constant price uh, uh, at 2017. Um, so uh, in order to normalize uh, and, and compare Apple to Apple, we, we cannot compare. If we're having two different currencies, we, we cannot compare the uh, productivity. We, we need to uh, normalize that to US dollar. And uh, all the countries uh, normalize it to US dollars and compare them. Otherwise, uh, we cannot. Uh, really measure the comparativeness or rather compare the comparative comparativeness between country to country. Uh, this labor productivity is also known as workforce uh, uh, productivity. Uh, it is uh, defined as uh, the economic output per labor hour. Eh? Uh, so uh, how do you calculate them? Basically, um, you uh, take the uh, total output and you divide that by the total number of hours. There will be some numbers uh, that uh, it, it make you uh, understand this better. Yeah? So wh why is this important? Why measuring the labor productivity is important? Uh, labor productivity is directly linked uh, to improve standards of living, 
uh, in the form of higher consumption. Uh, as in an economy, labor productivity grows, uh, it produces more goods and also services. This one we are talk not talking about products. Eh? Uh, the productivity is also on services uh, for the same amount of the relative work. If you look at the uh, definition or the formula, it's basically total output divided by the uh, labor hours. So the numerator is the output. Uh, which is G, the, the GDP, the denominator, denominator is the labor hours. So if you uh, were to increase productivity, you either do one of the three things. One, you increase the output and you get the labor hours uh, constant. So that labor productivity will go up. The other way, number two is you... Uh, maintain with the same output but you reduce the number of labor hours that you put in so that will also increase the labor productivity the other one is you increase the total output at a higher rate than the uh, increase of the uh, labor hours so if you increase the total output higher uh, but uh, you uh, higher than the rate of the uh, the uh, labor hours, then you will also uh, increase the labor productivity. Uh, so the uh, growth in labor productivity is directly attributable uh, to the fluctuation in uh, the capital, the physical capital. When I say capital here, it's the physical capital. Uh, when you have new technology that you increase the output with the lesser hours and also the human capital. Huh? Uh, so this is how this is why this is uh, important yeah um, so the increase in output uh, when you say the increase in output uh, it is possible to consume more goods or services for an increasingly reasonable price so that means you increase the output uh, however the uh, increase in the uh, price uh, will be at a lower rate so you have a higher labor productivity um, the, when I mentioned about physical capital just now, is uh, we are talking about tools or equipments or facilities that you inject in into uh, the uh, production. And when we talk about new technologies, of course, the new method. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be a, 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 a capital expenditure for the new technologies. It could be a simple, or rather, it could be uh, innovative technology. It could be at a cheaper price. Uh, as long as it's a new method, uh, so uh, to, 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 for us to produce more output. Yeah? Human capital, of course, uh, this is talking about human. Yeah? Increase in education, spe specialization, the skill, uh, and whatnot. So, uh, like I said earlier, the indicator here uh, on the labor productivity uh, is measured in US dollar, uh, constant price at 2017. Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, uh, as an indices, yeah. Okay, uh, so some numbers. I uh, just now was uh, the explanation about uh, the definition, uh, the concept behind it, and uh, the formula. So this is how you look at the numbers, yeah. So as an indicator, uh, we we have our GDP. You can see here the G GDP uh, from twenty. 14 to 2019, it has been increasing from 742,000. Uh, this is in US dollars, yeah. Uh, not uh, uh, this. This one is uh, in billion, yeah. Uh, in million rather, 742, 488 million. Uh, so uh, that was 2014, and keep on increasing until 2019. Uh, the number. <coughs> Uh, the number is uh, 941,000 uh, uh, million, okay? Uh, so uh, that is on GDP, and the total hours that was spent, yeah? Um, in 2014, it was 29,816 million hours, uh, increasing um, further until 2019, uh, the number was 32, uh, million eight, 32 
1,808 million hours yeah, uh, for the whole country. So the next one I've uh, circled or rather I've boxed up the output per hours work. Uh, so this is the labor productivity. So labor productivity per worker work in 20, uh, uh, 2019 was uh, 28.68. Is, is also increasing yeah, from 24.9 to uh, 28.68. So why are we not uh, improving uh, in our standing or our ranking? So that means okay, we are improving, but uh, other nations are improving uh, faster than us. They are improving more than us. So that's why we are still hovering around uh, figure 43 to 47. Yeah, The last one was 44. So, okay, uh, if you look at the um, the graph here, this one, I, 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 I took it out from the uh, NPC annual productivity report. Um, the uh, GDP per total hours work from 2015 to 2019 graphically, this is telling a similar uh, picture uh, as the uh, previous uh, slide, um, okay, with the numbers, but here uh, it's better, uh, you, you can see better in graphs. You can see that the labor productivity by employment is increasing. Yeah, um, so 36.1 to uh, 37, 38, 39.7 to 40.6. So it has been increasing. But if you look at the, the growth of labor productivity, uh, what is the rate of growth? We are growing, but what is the rate of growth? Okay, the rate of growth you, you could see uh, or you can see uh, from the graph here. Uh, in 2016, compared to 2015, uh, it went up by 2.8%. 2017, compared to 2016, it went up by 3.5%. And 2018, compared to 2017, it dropped a bit. Uh, still increased by 3.4%, but dropped than the previous year, which is 35 However, in 2019, we dropped further. There's an increase of 2.2%. Yes, uh, there's an increase. However, the rate of increase uh, has dropped. So you can see uh, the uh, how the uh, the quality of the increase of the labor productivity indicator, the growth. Yeah, uh, you can see that uh, the growth has been uh, dropping. Um, <clears throat> let's let's do some analysis. Okay, let's look at other countries. Um, so uh, here you can see the uh, the best uh, perform uh, nation when it comes to labor productivity is Ireland, okay? Um, then Norway, Germany, and you know, uh, at about, what, that, that, that is not the only thing that I want to, to, to share with you in this picture. What I want to, to, to share with you is, why you look at the, uh, the average annual hours work on the far right, okay? And also, uh, next to it and left to it is the uh, GDP per hours. Yeah, GDP per hours. That means GDP per hour work uh, in that country. You you can see uh, what you can deduce here. What you can deduce here. You look at Ireland. Ireland, uh, the average uh, working hours. Um, is 1,738, but their labor productivity is 99.5. Go down the slide, uh, Norway, uh, the average annual hours work uh, is 1,419. Uh, this is in million, yeah? And uh, the uh, labor productivity uh, is 83.1 US dollars. And go down further, Germany, and they work 1,356, and their labor productivity uh, 72.2 was, huh? this is 2017. But you look at the very bottom, I, I just want to prove one point, I, I'll prove my point afterwards. Uh, you look at the very bottom of the graph, you look at Greece, South Korea, and Mexico. Uh, you look at Greece, Greece, they work 2,000, or rather 2,000, 18 million hours, uh, but their labor productivity was only 43.8. Uh, similarly, uh, South Korea, uh, South Korea worked uh, 2,000, 
24 million hours, uh, but their labor productivity is 37.0 US dollars. Mexico, Mexico, they work 2,257 million hours, and their productivity, labor productivity, that is, is 21.6 uh, US dollars. What is this telling you? This is saying that the lesser number of hours you work, the more productive you are. Uh, if you just that there's a correlation there the correlation shows that the lower the number of hours work the higher the productivity we all know from statistics correlation doesn't mean causation it doesn't it doesn't mean that lower hours cause higher productivity no what I'm, what i'm talking about is the correlation yeah there's a correlation the lowest the the so there's an inverse proportional yeah? is uh, between the labor hours uh, or rather the hours work yeah and the labor productivity uh, so where 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 does malaysia stand malaysia is between uh, south korea and mexico uh, malaysia the annual uh, average hours work uh, was 2190 2190 million hours uh, and the uh, labor productivity was uh, averaging at 27 dollars yeah uh, so that is per hour so we are between malaysia is between south korea and mexico uh, so i this is this is uh, um, this, this slide uh, I, I i i i just want to share something the, the first part of the slide is basically what i've shared just now already yeah uh, the uh, so you can see here this is from OECD. Yeah? Uh, OECD, uh, OECD um, has uh, published this report. Um, so did, I, I'm, I'm not just taking this from any numbers. This is the published report by OECD. Yeah? And um, the, uh, you could see from here, Ireland, which is the best, they work only 90, uh, they, 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 the amount of hours they work is much less than um, the uh, Greece, South Korea, and also Mexico. Okay, so the the, the three countries that I mentioned, uh, the uh, Ireland, Norway, and also Germany, the number of hours work was substantially less than uh, Mexico, South Korea, and also Greece. Okay, um, so what what is this uh, telling us? Yeah, longer working week not necessarily result in higher productivity higher labor productivity we all know that but uh, this is uh, this is proven in numbers yeah this one is proven in numbers it has to do with many factors yeah uh, so it's not only you work less then your productivity becomes higher no it's not as simple as that there's a lot of elements inside there uh, that need to be studied and need to be scrutinized uh, you've got to be meticulous and ripping apart uh, what constitute uh, this uh, higher productivity yeah uh, but from here uh, the data suggests that four day work week uh, is better than a five day work week yeah but uh, you can go down yeah how much to go down is that is one day work week better than four day so that that's why i'm what i'm saying is the, the, there are a lot of other elements there are a lot of other factors in there but this data uh, that i've shared you with you suggests that four-day work week is better than five-day work week. Huh? Uh, working longer hours doesn't mean that it's going to be better productivity. So uh, what happened was also uh, a company in uh, New Zealand uh, conducted a trial on a four-day work week. So they, 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 they did the trial. And um, what they found was, I don't know whether this is sustainable, but uh, during the period that they had done, uh, this one is reported as well. Huh? Uh, during the period that they had they had done the four day work week, uh, what they saw was a dramatic, a dramatic or drastic improvement uh, in uh, work life balance. Definitely, uh, you work four days, you you spend the time with your family three days. Yeah, uh, productivity gets higher. Yeah, and they get uh, heightened commitment from the the people, and of course uh, lower stress. So this company, this particular company, you, you can Google the, uh, which company is this. Yeah, um, I'm not going to mention it here, but you can Google this uh, company in New Zealand. And um, 
uh, from uh, what the report says, they, they have been uh, uh, from then uh, working on four day work week. Uh, having said that, having said that, yeah, um, I mentioned this also uh, during the uh, overall productivity webinar uh, two days ago uh, when I show a graph uh, between the salary. Uh, this in Malaysia salary uh, rate increase going down and also the productivity uh, goes up. Uh, so I caution you not to use that 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 graph and bring to your boss and ask for a raise. Similarly, um, what uh, having uh, shared with you on the uh, longer working week doesn't mean that uh, higher productivity uh, or in this case it shows that lower uh, working hours. Uh, gives better or yields better uh, labor productivity. Don't go to your boss and say that okay, I, I'm I'm going to work four work week, four day work week because uh, the data shows that uh, uh, four working days is better than uh, five five days. So I, I'm I'm not suggesting that you do that. Yeah, uh, you might be, you know, uh, asked by your boss to. Uh, walk towards the door and exit from the company sooner than you think yeah uh, okay so uh, be, be careful about this be careful about this and um, so i i want to bring closer to to to, to malaysia uh, maybe ireland norway and also germany they are they are far away from malaysia so let's take a look at korea korea has the success story i shared this uh, two days ago as well uh, they did reform I'm not going to go through all this uh, to read. Uh, maybe later on, uh, uh, you, you you can, uh, what do you call, get that, this, this slide. And I just want to show that uh, what they did, uh, they had uh, uh, an extensive uh, corporate and also banking system restructuring. And you can see the total factor productivity has uh, improved uh, many times over. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they, they they did reform extensive reform on uh, on uh, the the summary of this is extensive corporate and banking system restructuring and also the uh, the labor training in the export oriented sectors yeah um, my slide doesn't want to move okay uh, next slide uh, same thing. Um, Yesterday, I showed manufacturing and agriculture where we had a lot of uh, foreign workers uh, in them. Uh, their productivity uh, level or the rate uh, or rather the, the, uh, the level of productivity is inversely proportional to the number of uh, foreign workers in, in that sector, especially in manufacturing and agriculture. And service has, has some, uh, some role to play as well but uh, not in Korea. So what they have done had uh, helped them uh, to uh, get out of the uh, low productivity. Um, so they, they, they have increased the productivity in, in this, uh, these three sectors. Okay, um, so Malaysia, um, I mentioned yesterday, uh, maybe I mentioned uh, I, I use uh, a different graph. So I just want to use a different graph today so that uh, if you had, uh, Join yesterday webinar is, is not going to be a repeat. Uh, same message, but uh, different slides. Uh, for this one is Malaysia Productivity Blueprint that was launched by Malaysian government uh, in May 2017. Um, so uh, these are the initiative, uh, the five key strategic trusts uh, that form uh, the basis of uh, the recommendation to raise productivity and address the challenges that uh, uh, Malaysia face. So number one is uh, building the workforce of the future. Um, basically restructuring um, the workforce by raising the number of high skilled workers. Yeah, tightening entry of low skilled workers. Uh, low skilled workers uh, in this case are the foreign workers, because uh, many other countries they have foreign workers as well, but their foreign workers are highly skilled foreign workers. So the highly skilled foreign workers will yield in a better output. So the higher output, the rate of the output is higher than the lower skilled workers. So that's why we need to tighten the entry of the low skilled workers. Yeah. 
Um, and of course, uh, restructuring will work for us to meet the demands of the future uh, economy. Yeah? So number two, uh, what was recommended in the Malaysia productivity blueprint was driving digitalization and innovation of the country. Yeah? Uh, that is strengthening uh, the readiness of enterprises to effectively adopt and exploit technology and digital advantage. Uh, uh, you mentioned here, uh, such as the fourth uh, industry uh, revolution, okay? The much talked about uh, today. Yeah? Uh, number three, making industry accountable for productivity. So in this case, what government was trying to do is to reduce reliance on non-critical subsidies, linking financial assistance. So this one also uh, has some, uh, what do you call, uh, similar or some parallel with the uh, Korea uh, restructuring, okay? Um, I'm not going to go into very detail, and uh, I don't have that much detail anyhow uh, on this uh, the subsidies and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and uh, but it has to do with this restructuring as well. So in this case, linking financial assistance and liberalisation efforts to productivity outcome. So they must link. You got comment. You got to commentary and strengthening industry positioning in higher value. In this case, higher value add. Uh, segments of the value chain. So we don't want to uh, keep on uh, staying in the uh, non-complex economy. Yeah, um, we got to go higher the value chain, higher the value chain. Yeah, uh, so that uh, we can have higher value add. Yeah, and um, number four, forging a robust ecosystem. In this case. Um, government uh, is talking about addressing the regulations the regulatory constraint yeah uh, there are many uh, initiatives that uh, uh, has been done uh, such as uh, this has been done by mpc yeah rurb for example reducing unnecessary uh, regulatory burden ria yeah uh, the uh, uh, what else uh, my cure cutting the red tape, non-tariff measures, stuff like that. Yeah, all those kind of things to, to, to have all this uh, good regulatory practice or smart regulation. Yeah? Uh, number five, uh, securing strong implementation mechanism. I, I have my own recommendation uh, on top of whatever that has been put by MPB here. Uh, let me read the, what MPB says here, securing a, so, a strong implementation mechanism like embedding culture of productivity through nationwide movement and driving accountability in productivity performance through effective governance mechanism. Uh, you, I'll, I'll save that to my recommendation and conclusion afterward. Uh, on top of this, on how to have this strong, to secure a strong implementation mechanism, I, 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 I have my own recommendation as well. Yeah. So let's talk about the three levels, uh, the national level, the sectorial level and also at enterprise level. So national level initiative outline policy priorities to uplift national productivity. So this is at national level. Yeah? Um, this is to be led by core government ministries and agencies. Uh, the targets uh, governance of productivity policies impacting, impacting all economic sectors. <clears throat> um, the other one is at sector level, sector level initiative outline explicit sector strategies to address sector level productivity barriers. Yeah? Uh, this is to be led by key industry association and anchor enterprises for each sector. They have uh, in, in, in uh, MPC, they have different, different nexus yeah? um, for uh, different key industries. So target acceleration of productivity uplift. Uh, impacting large enterprises and SMEs at sector level. So this is the initiative at sector level. At enterprise level, um, the enterprise level initiative outline a specific enterprise strategies to enhance uh, operation related to productivity improvement. So this is at enterprise uh, to be led by management at enterprises, um, including SMEs, yeah, uh, with guidance from sector productive nexus. nexus. I mentioned about nexus uh, just now. So at the sector level, eh? target productivity improvement at enterprise level. So that, that was the, the intent. So all this productivity need to be addressed holistically 
Uh, they all need to be done in tandem uh, at national level, at sector level, and at an enterprise level. That has been outlined in the Malaysia Productivity Blueprint. Um, so this one is uh, the uh, further recommendation. Uh, this is talking about the urgent action, uh, the 10, uh, um, the 10 uh, urgent actions uh, of, for the uh, uh, national, uh, this is for the national initiative, yeah? uh, 10 urgent action uh, for the five different trusts. Yeah? Uh, I'm not going to go through one by one, but uh, what the government has done, they have uh, um, chosen uh, 10 initiatives uh, that uh, requires urgent and immediate attention uh, to be worked on. Okay, um, so next uh, is on the recommendation. Uh, similar recommendation like yesterday, and I also mentioned about the foreign worker. Um, so uh, there was a decrease uh, or decline uh, in the uh, foreign workers documented. Uh, documented means legal and uh, um, so they have uh, passport permits and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, Those that is not, uh, uh, what do you call, registered is, is different. We are, we are talking about the documented. Yeah? Uh, dropped from 16% to 12% uh, from 2013 to 2017. Okay, so what is the end objective basically as far as foreign worker is concerned? To ensure future foreign worker management system in Malaysia will be clearly articulated, firmly implemented, and more aligned to Malaysia economic objective. Yeah, uh, we need a clear stance on the role of low skilled work, uh, workers. Next slide will show some uh, quota for that. Uh, gradual implementation and clear communication of policies. Uh, we cannot just yank and uh, uh, so uh, and 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 uh, disrupt uh, the whole uh, economy. Uh, but it, it got to be uh, gradual. But you can see that this this is has, excuse me, this is happening now. Um, so the other object market driven demand management instrument. It could be fair treatment of foreign workers, effective monitoring enforcement. Okay, this is the ceiling or the quota uh, that I, I mentioned uh, the, uh, for different different industry like uh, the food industry, the cult agriculture industry, uh, the determinants could be the number of chairs for the restaurant or the food industry, uh, the uh, determinant for agriculture could be number of factors, so how many hectares uh, will uh, equate to how many people and stuff like that, number of foreign workers. Uh, this is to set upper limit of for foreign worker intake by by industry. Yeah, uh, I I got this from the Ministry of Home Affairs. All right. Okay, the other uh, recommendation uh, we went through this just now. Uh, definitely, uh, we we talk about the effective implementation of Malaysia Productivity Blueprint, uh, and um, shift from primarily government driven initiative. Uh, to uh, more industry uh, uh, initiative, yeah. Uh, so, but at the same, but we are focusing on the same, yeah. Uh, building workforce, driving localization, making industry comfortable, forging robust ecosystem, and and strong uh, implementation uh, mechanism. Okay, and uh, I won't go through this. Uh, same thing, yeah. Uh, next. Uh, we mentioned, or rather, we, we discussed just now about the real and also financial reform. Uh, uh, that definitely can spur the productivity growth. Uh, I've shown you the example, uh, the success story of Korea. Uh, we need to implement targeted and interlocking reforms uh, that will encourage technology. Yeah, um, um, the the change of the uh, structural uh, facilities and uh, of course reduce the resource uh, misallocation yeah um, we need to draw broad policy lesson uh, from past cross country experience uh, we just had one but uh, we need to study more and how uh, they were done yeah uh, especially the countries that i mentioned earlier uh, like the ireland the uh, norway and also germany yeah uh, so that this can also provide some conceptual uh, framework 
uh, for us to work on yeah other recommendation uh, i touched on this uh, uh, just now uh, about the total hours work per annum um, how that uh, inversely uh, correlated uh, to the productivity uh, we need to study uh, like i mentioned correlation doesn't mean causation yeah Cor correlation doesn't mean causation so uh, we need to study what are the other uh, factors that uh, it could be a working culture it could be uh, how smart you are uh, in doing your job and stuff like that yeah uh, so uh, a study a further study need to be conducted yeah uh, we also need to study labor wages and how that correlates to the productivity uh, this also this echo the uh, webinar that i uh, what I, I i said in the webinar two days ago about the uh, labor wage versus the uh, productivity rate increase okay okay the top five uh i alluded to this earlier um i uh, this is my recommendation uh we need to appoint a, an agency that can drive and also ensure effective implementation of the Malaysia Productivity Blueprint. And I could only think that uh, it is MPC uh, that need to be given that authority uh, to drive and, 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 and ensure effective implementation. If we were to change our current ranking and continue to, to be better in our productivity. So that, that is my, my uh, highest recommendation actually, in order to, because MPB has been outlined uh quite clearly however if the implementation the execution is not done uh correctly uh you know if not done uh, effectively um uh, we we are not going to get anywhere okay uh, the other ones reform measures uh on the corporate and also backing system restructuring uh foreign uh number three uh foreign labor policy uh i also mentioned salary and wages to commensurate the productivity and, and study of the working hours so in conclusion, uh, the uh, business and also government can definitely increase uh, labor productivity of workers by direct investing and also uh, creating incentive uh, for increasing in technology and human and also uh, physical capital. We're talking about this main three, yeah? technology, uh, physical capital, and also human capital. Okay, so investment in physical capital, increasing the investment of capital goods, uh, including infrastructure from the governments and also private sector to help productivity uh, while lowering the cost of doing business. Uh, the other one is human capital, uh, talking about quality of education and training, upskilling, reskilling, uh, offering opportunities for workers to uh, upgrade their skill, offer education and training. I think some of this has been done. Uh, but more could be done in order to for us to realize this matter. Uh, so this one, this needs to be done at affordable cost uh, in order to help raise the cooperation and also economy uh, productivity. Uh, the other one, of course, technological progress, uh, developing new technologies, uh, including, of course, the hard technology like computerization or robotic, and also soft technologies like new uh, modes of organizing business pro-free market reforms in the government policy. Um, you know, you, you, it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, you know, the, the solution is out there. Uh, it can be in the form of uh, uh, hard technology. It can be in the form of soft technology. So uh, this will, uh, of course, enhance the uh, productivity of the worker if you provide them all this technology. Um, so this, uh, the conclusion is still the same. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to repeat uh, what uh, I said earlier. So this is the conclusion. Uh, what needs to be done uh, in order to, to improve our labor productivity. So with that, I uh, um, end my, my, my sharing, my presentation. Uh, so uh, let me see. Hi, Jerry. Have... Yeah. Hi, my apology to you. And no uh, apologies to MPC today. <laughs> it's entirely my blunder today in the start time. Uh, I got it wrong. Um, no sorry, problem. I have left you out. Sorry, I have left you out in the call just now. Um, it was not intended. Yeah.
but I did not miss yeah, much yeah, though yeah, because yeah. I, I think I missed like the uh, early part 10 minutes I missed it but since then I've been listening and learning from you um, yeah not, we are learning from each other <laughs> it is you have presented yet again a comprehensive and persuasive sharing today okay um I'm just uh, quickly, I'm trying to uh, check the um, questions coming in. Uh, there's no questions yet from the audience. Um, okay. I, I do see a trend. Uh, probably they are not as uh, quick to ask questions. Maybe okay. we can interact a bit uh, to uh, get them to think. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, this is, uh, like you said, uh, very similar to um, what you presented. Uh, the day the day before, uh, but the measurement is different. Uh, right. Because of the measurement that is different, I think there's some tweaking in your um, recommendations uh, in the improvement as well. Yes. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it that uh, you have uh, uh, considered the holistic uh, improvement, you know, uh, using the uh, productivity blueprint uh, alignment uh, on different levels. You have... Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I saw it the day before, but today I see it. You, know, you have three levels, you have national level, sec sectoral level, enterprise level. Yes. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is really good. This is very clear. I mean, that one slide, that one slide I think clarifies a lot of things. Uh, it talks about what we, we need to do in terms of uh, improving uh, from different uh, perspectives. You know, not, not just labor perspective, but you also talk about uh, uh, digitalization. You also talk about technology again, infrastructure. We talk about the uh, the pro free market reform. I think I, I see some tweaking uh, of your solution because of the way we measure this indicator, uh, which is very clever. I think. Thank you, um, thank you. I, I think that as a compliment. Yeah, I I see there are so many things that uh, you have uh, suggested. Uh, for example, the national level, sectoral level. There, there are so many there are so many sub levels to that. Uh, you talk about sector. Oh, there are so many subsectors, you know, private, government, manufacturing, services, even enterprises, ah, the MNCs, SMEs, micro SMEs. There are so many. Do you do you think? I think you probably know there are challenges in 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 the implementation of all these different levels. Which of these levels do you think will pose the biggest challenge? Uh, when you say level, what do you mean? The uh, national, national level, level sector level, yeah. enterprise level, or even the sub levels. Okay. Which which, the, of, the, which of these different levels will be posing the biggest challenge in the implementation of the uh, improvement? Okay. If the okay, let's let okay national level. Let, let's leave it to the uh, the government. Yeah, the call government. Okay. Let's talk about all weekend. Yeah. 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 So yeah, the, the the sector level, uh, different sectors. Uh, that's why uh, MPC has uh, uh, have many nexus. Yeah, uh, mm. there's agro nexus. There's uh, the private healthcare nexus. There's uh, you know, there, I think there are about six or seven nexus because different nexus uh, uh, which take care of different sector. Yeah, uh, will have their own uh, challenges. Uh, I'm mm. I'm not uh, really uh, very close uh, to to uh, all these uh, these uh, sectors or nexus but uh, if mm. you look at uh, what is mostly impacted you you could uh, I, I would think I would think is the uh, uh, tourism uh, nexus uh, that's one of the mm -hmm. sector tourism sector so they have a, a tourism nexus in there uh, having mm. uh, attended a few meetings uh, mm. you know, uh, not very closely but uh, uh, listening to 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 all the challenges tourism has been hardly hard uh, hardly hit rather uh, yeah. because of this uh, pandemic uh, so that that's a that's, that's a challenge i mean the the, the pandemic uh, the covid 19 has given uh, a different uh, what do you call uh, uh, swing uh, yeah. different curveball uh, to yeah. to the industry uh, while they were um, probably a year ago uh, this yeah. uh, tourism industry they have a lot of initiatives Mm. Uh, in order to improve uh, the the economy uh, and the productivity mm. and, and and stuff like that, but came uh, COVID nineteen uh, beginning of the year, uh, 
uh, that mm. that that is another curveball uh, uh, altogether uh, that's facing them. Uh, so uh, they, 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 they are. This is the I I would think this is the hardest challenge. Huh? People, I mean, yeah. people like you and me, we don't travel uh, because of restrictions. Because of, right we are, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. So I think uh, if if you're talking about which sector is uh, hardly hit. Uh, uh, or not hardly hit, uh, hard, being uh, hit the hardest uh, mm. is, is the tourism. Uh, then, of course, you're talking about all the other industries. Yeah, They are all mm. affected. But I think the one that is uh, uh, hit the hardest uh, is the uh, tourism uh, sector or, mm. or nexus. Mm. Yeah, I think what you said uh, is very much aligned with uh, the data that I see. Um, tourism, um, being the biggest uh, in our uh, what do you call services contributor uh, in the GDP, uh, travel travel is one of the biggest um, uh, what do you call uh, income source that we have in Malaysia. Um, yeah, you're right. The pandemic right now is uh, going to be difficult on this sector. So if we're going to improve the productivity in this sector, it's going to take some time to get back. Even sure. to talk about you know, doing anything in the tourism sector, um, people are rather sensitive about it because of the pandemic. You know, I, I saw in the news that um, some ministers are trying to um, recommend um, a reboot in the tourism uh, sector, and, and, and that, that suggestion got backlash. So, um, yeah, I think there are certain things that we can do, um, but I think you need, you need to take time. Sure, yeah. sure. The, I, I, this, this, uh, whatever that has been put in the Malaysia productivity blueprint, uh, definitely mm. didn't consider about the uh, the pandemic or the epidemic uh, that uh, will hit us. Uh, however, uh, you know, working uh, along uh, this uh, uh, initiative, uh, they, 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 they have to be tweaks and uh, fine tuning, uh, yeah. or maybe some got to some area got to be hard reset uh, in order to oh, move yes. forward. So, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, by and large, uh, when we talk about mm. this uh, Malaysia productivity blueprint, uh, be it mm. national uh, sector or enterprise level, uh, I think mm. a lot of study and a lot of, a lot of good study uh, that mm. has been done uh, before mm. this MPB uh, was launched, uh, except mm. that, uh, you know, there's, there's a different curveball coming. Uh, some people, pardon me for saying this, you know, got shit on you what, what what could you do <laughs> yeah? but uh, yeah. so this is uh, uh, while uh, this is not totally it's going to go to a rubbish bin uh, but mm. a lot of them uh, is still uh, applicable however mm. the uh, covid-19 uh, factor uh, need to be mm. need to be considered uh, mm. so uh, and and if you see in the annual productivity report from uh, mpc mm. Um, mm. no, that that also has been, uh, you know, uh, considering uh, this uh, this pandemic uh, hit uh, to the yes. nation, and yes. uh, a few things has has been uh, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, the the bearing change a bit. Uh, however, the, the intent and the end in mind is still the same. Mm hmm. I think just to uh, echo what you talked about, the holistic approach. I think when we talk about holistic, holistic approach, we, we got to take care of um, the unintended um, effect that the solution will bring. So the curve what they talk about, I think that refers to um, you know the harms uh, of the uh, recommendation, just like the, the productivity blueprint. We didn't think about um, any you know special causes that's that's going to affect uh, the implementation. So yeah, tweaking, uh, reacting. Um, constantly monitoring and, and improving the solution. I think that's, that's what we need to do. Right. And I also right. like the way you uh, put it, you know, um, the, the causation yeah, cannot be, you know, something that you talk about when you have correlation. I also right. like the way you put it, just like the day before, you know, we don't, don't bring that chart to your boss and ask for a raise. <laughs> uh, this time you said, don't, don't bring that graph to your boss and ask for reduced work days in a week. <laughs> <laughs> because there are many other factors. This this is this just a this shows the correlation. It, it just it, it just uh, 
point uh, towards saying, hey, uh, longer hours doesn't mean that you are more productive. I think we have been saying this at work. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. this is showing in, in numbers and uh, this uh, uh, shown by OECD uh, for different yeah. different countries and and we cannot yeah. run uh, we cannot say that this is a false that uh, this this is what it is yeah yeah but you have shown something very interesting over here um, people may be intrigued and say hey um, if there's not there's not causation um, maybe there are other factors that are causing this. You know what the other factors? I mean, is it is it because of other factors that people can work shorter, but they are more productive? Um, what is it? Uh, you know, is it is it the 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 value add that they they contribute from the um, uh, work uh, that is contributing to productivity? What is it? I mean, is it because yeah, of work life? Uh, one is, yeah, yeah, you are right. Uh, you you mentioned it right. One is uh, higher value add. If uh, ah. you, you work uh, the same hours as I do, but you mm. uh, produce more value add, uh, definitely mm. you are more productive than me. I, we, I can be working the same hours, eight hours, you are working eight hours, but I produce only uh, worth of uh, 1,000 ringgit, but you are producing mm. 1,500 ringgit with the same yeah. hours. So you, you are higher, you, 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 you uh, what do you call, you have a higher uh, labor productivity, higher productivity. And number two is, uh, if you're talking about the work culture itself, uh, mm. you you can be working, uh, you can be recording, uh, I, I could be recording eight hours work, yeah? Mm. But my net working hours is only six, mm. yeah? Uh, and you, you, you are also recording eight hours, but you are really working eight hours. Uh, so yeah. you, definitely you get a higher output and higher output with the same number of, of work then you get a higher productivity and uh, uh, number yeah. three yeah and number three is basically if you're talking about uh, you are having higher education you are smarter than me okay. uh, no no I, you, you are you are <laughs> you want to be a good one so I have higher education than you <laughs> I okay. have higher education than you we are we, we are we are doing the same job I could be doing it uh, better than you, producing it faster. Mm. Uh, mm. Maybe I produce it cheaper, uh, mm. and and I produce it better compared to you uh, because you have lower education. Uh, mm. And this is not really, and I don't take it personal. I, I mean, I, I'm just giving no, an example. I, I, so, I fully agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So there, there are so many other factors. So you're looking at the number of hours alone and trying to gauge the labor productivity. Uh, that is going to throw you off balance. Uh, mm. The what what the 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 I, I like the way you put it as well just now. Yeah, uh, what we are trying to to show in this graph is you can be working lesser hours, but you can be more productive. This is what we are saying. And how mm. to get there? This is what we want to try to find out. Uh, how mm. did the the Irish and the Norwegian and also the Germans? Uh, uh, get better uh, productivity by working less hours. How come the uh, the, the Greek and the uh, the South Korean people and the Mexican they 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 work longer hours, but uh, they have uh, lower labor productivity. Same goes to Malaysia. Uh, so hmm. this is uh, the I when I look at this graph is is yeah is uh, it can be intriguing. Uh, yeah. But uh, it is what it is, and it was reported in Forbes and Statista, and this is from OECD, the uh, uh, what do you mm. call the Organization for Economic uh, Council yeah. and Development, uh, yeah, something yeah. like that. And Malaysia, Malaysia is uh, at the bottom of the graph as well. Malaysia is averaging at 27 uh, US dollar per hour uh, by mm. working uh, 2,190. Yeah, mm. that is uh, just slightly less than the uh, the Mexican working. Uh, probably, oh, I, I I used to go to Mexico a lot. I, I used to to, to uh. Uh, work in uh, okay. or rather I, I used to manage uh, also uh, in in, mm. in Mexico. Uh, they they are hardworking. You can see, but how how do you define hardworking? Longer hours, because sometimes they work longer hours, but uh, they also. Uh, speak about uh, other stuff than than work, uh, so yeah. that doesn't contribute to work. Of course, to the personal satisfaction, friendship, uh, comrade, and then and stuff like that is okay. But Malaysia could mm. be the same. 
uh, we could be working longer hours, we could have overtime, but the thing is that the, the, the work could be done in eight hours, but because uh, we yearn about the overtime, we want to work 12 hours to get 12 mm. hours salary or the over mm. plastic. But we can actually get the things done in eight hours. So I'm not saying that we are, I, I'm, I'm saying that this could be the factors. Yeah, uh, this could be the yeah. factor. The Irish, if you know, the Irish like to drink, but uh, do you drink oh, yeah. right after work or, you know, you have Irish pub for that matter. Oh, yeah. But uh, do, do they drink um, right after work or during work also they, they just enjoy ch 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 chatting and, you know, uh, slurping beers and stuff like that, uh, which in this case it doesn't say so because they are the best, uh, highest uh, labor productivity. Mm. Mm. Uh, at 99 uh, US mm. dollar, that three times of hours, not three times, almost four times of hours. Yeah, uh, yeah. by working uh, much lesser hours than we do. We we work mm -hmm. uh, 2,190, almost 2,200 hours, uh, mm. million hours that is, and they only work 1,700 million huh. hours. So that's, that's a, that, lot that, a lot of different, a lot of different, huh. yeah. So, uh, so uh, again, it's a correlation, uh, inversely proportional. Uh, however, uh, mm. don't don't uh, bring this uh, to the boss and say that okay, I want to work less hours. Yeah. I think the boss should be the one who, who needs to get worried. Um, yeah. You see, um, just to quote uh, what you said, uh, even in Asia over here, Japanese they they also uh, enjoy life um, after work. They also go for a drink. Um, but still, you talk about the hours they put in. It's a lot, a lot of hours they put in. I'm always intrigued. Why certain nations? Is it because of the culture uh, that they, they don't stay so long in the office, but they can accomplish a lot of things? Yeah. So, uh, even from personal experience, um, Japanese uh, companies in Malaysia and Singapore, um, the staffs they don't day to live i use the word there because they see that their boss are still in the office even if it is past five o'clock so to them the knock of time depends on when the boss leaves yeah. so again the culture, the culture part of, yeah. again exactly so i think your um, suggestions in the implementation of, of 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 this productivity improvement i think we need to go down to the ground and and probably put the business owner, put the business owner in a limelight that says, well, can we change the culture? Because the culture changed from the person who leads the company, who, who perhaps has the influence on the, on, on the way we work. So if the business owner doesn't motivate uh, this kind of balance in work life, it's pretty hard to start from anyway, even if you talk about sectoral level, it has to be built up from the bottom. Sure. Mm. All right. I, I fully agree. I fully agree. Yeah. But it's tough. <laughs> it like is, you said, it is, you it's said. not like you. You can change this overnight. Is is uh, no. it's a culture thing. Is uh, something got to be ingrained and inculcated into your mind. And uh, mm. you know, you, you got to. You, it, it's a paradigm shift uh, as far as yeah. productivity. You look at productivity is concerned. You 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 yeah. want to stay productive, uh, and um, at the same time. Uh, you, you don't want to slog in order to be productive. Uh, you've got to work <laughs> smart uh, and be productive. Yeah. But you'll be surprised, even uh, uh, younger generations uh, who are younger than us, they still fall on to the traditional way of management. Punch card, you know, punch card. You have to stay in office for that long, you know, that, that shows work. So work to them is uh, basically tied to the desk. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's something that is very hard to change, especially when it's already been, um, that way for so many years. You're right. Um, okay, I still don't see any questions coming in. <laughs> okay, I hope people, I either I confuse them totally or uh, this one, yeah, they, 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 they get it. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think many audience who are, who are experienced and able, um, they are listening. Um, so I don't think if, Anyone would be confused, probably I'll be the first. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way that you ask question, definitely I cannot say that you're confused. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, um, 
I don't have any questions uh, uh, for you in Jerry Wyatt. I, I find your presentation uh, really enlightening. Uh, it's very informative um, and it's very clear to me. Um, okay. You let me go off easy. <laughs> well, show me your implementation plan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. I'm okay. just kidding. That's, a, that's, that's a big one. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, if, if there's no other, do you have any questions for me? I don't think so. No, uh, well, uh, I just want to apologize that we, we started. We don't want to get the participant to wait. I know that I sometimes we have uh, issues and, and stuff like that, you know. Uh, need, need not mm -hmm. apologize, uh, Lawrence. Uh, this is understandable. Uh, and uh, it's not that you did this on purpose or whatever. But uh, again, thank you for moderating. And uh, you have been uh, doing a good moderation uh, so far with me. Yeah, I just want to thank you. Uh, I don't have any question for you. Just uh, Just want to say thank you. And we said right. also, I want to say thank you again to NPC, uh, the Secretariat, for uh, allowing me and inviting me and allowing me to, to speak uh, on this topic uh, and, and trusted me to do the study on this. Uh, hopefully, whatever I share uh, in this webinar, uh, I know that it's being recorded, uh, could be also, uh, uh, what do you call, replayed uh, later on uh, if there are any things that need to be uh, clarified. Uh, always can clarify with me if it's not very clear. Uh, I try to make it uh, as simple as possible, uh, even though there are numbers. I mean, when you put with numbers and the graphs and tables and uh, figures, it, it could be, and some mathematics, uh, it, it could be, uh, what do you call, very dry and not interesting. Uh, but uh, I try to make it as simple as possible. I, I hope, uh, you know, from, from I'm, I'm happy, you know, from the way that Lawrence uh, ask me questions and comment uh, back on my presentation. Uh, sounded like uh, Lawrence uh, understood uh, the content, uh, which is uh, uh, something that is uh, good to know for me. And uh, again, thank you all the participants for, for joining this uh, webinar and, and uh, hope to see uh, all of you again uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jay Roy. I think you deserve it. All the credit should go to you. Um, no, you know, I always believe if you can, if you can make a, a complex topic um, easily understood even to um, any audience outside the field, um, that is uh, not easy to do. So uh, kudos to you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Appreciate it. We are coming to the end of the webinar today. Um, again, I still have to apologize for my absence in the, in the beginning of this uh, session. Um, we hope Jerry uh, will have a chance to share with us um, any future topics um, like this that is interesting. Uh, for those of you who would like to catch up with any other videos, uh, please log on to the YouTube um, set up by NPC, Activity and Competitiveness Channel. Um, with that, uh, let's conclude this webinar. Um, stay safe, um, stay happy learning. We hope to see you again. Thank okay. you, Lauren. Thank you, Jerry Wyatt. Okay, bye. bye, -bye.